Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Emo Brown Podcast. I am Esteban Garcia III, donning my Padres jacket as its opening week. With us today is Barry the producer, always here behind the stick, making sure everybody looks good. And boy, look at him, fresh off of performance. Who's that hiding in the corner? Oh, that's Albert. No mic on him today because we know what happens when he has a mic. We'll hear him. Joining us on the couch, one of my greatest friends of all time. En serio, sin vaciladas. Enrique Lugo the Third, bienvenido, alias El Chicle, bro. Chicle. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We'll get into that. Yeah. How are you? We'll get into that, Chicle. Chicle, yeah, you yeah. have done it again. It's very rare when you show up, but when you do, you bring the magic. Today is no different. You have brought a friend of yours in, friend of ours. Yeah. I've had the opportunity to golf alongside for a few holes mm -hmm. with our guests. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you do the introduction. Yeah. I don't know if we should bring up the golf, though. No. I think he might still be waiting for something. We'll get into that. We'll, we'll get into yeah. that. We will definitely um, get into that. Good thing Caesar's here. Yeah. He might have to listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A ver, chicle, pues. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so our guest today, mm. um, I would say more than a friend, a mentor, uh, someone that I actually met him many years ago at, at, when I was working at BLCI. Um, he came with his one one of the things that he does, um, and they performed for our students. Got to meet him in that way, and then years later, um, in the education world, he's been doing the work that I think is is the most important work. Um, most people call it restorative practices, restorative um, ways of doing things. And what what's interesting with him though is not just the buzzword; it's the actual human connection, seeing students for who they are and where where they're at, um, really giving them opportunities to to grow and evolve from from where they are in that moment. Um, and so he he's put things in perspective for me, um, and I'm really excited for the Emo Brown podcast to share. His work um, recently received a, a recognition for all the work that he does in the community beyond the school setting. Um, he's traveled all over the world um, to, to share what I, I think what his whole life is about, right, of, of bringing people together and, and helping people thrive and, and learn through conversation and dialogue, uh, which is really what I'm trying to do in, in my role right now as a, as a dean of students, dean of culture. Um, so, Macedonio Arteaga is a badass. There he is. You're about to listen. Look at him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> stylish. Did I mention stylish? Stylish fellow, bro. Hell Macedonio. yeah. Como estamos, jefe? Bienvenido. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm glad I showered and brushed my teeth and my hair. You're very presentable. You come across very well on the TV screen. Look at you, man. It's been a minute since I've seen you. First time I actually personally met you was at our golf tournament two years ago or the three years ago. I believe it was the inaugural one. I think it was the first yeah, one. Yeah, it was number one at yeah. Chula Vista. Uh, Chicle was in my ear then. Then we crossed paths once or twice on the golf course. I told Chicle because I don't think you were there. The second time you At National City, yeah. No, no, no. And I was like, oh, wait a second. And then you told me, hey. I'm owed some gifts. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, man. Uh -huh. I'm excited to get to know all of your that. story, oh, Mr. Mazzolino. Please share with us a little bit about yourself. Well, first of all, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to say thank you for, I think, just thinking of having me here and then inviting me. Um, I've never, I never take any anything for granted when people ask me to go you know be part of something um for some weird reason i always think of my mom you know she she's not here no more but she used to say ¿Tú qué haces, mijo? and like i was like what do you mean mom and she's like well I, you go here and they pay you just to talk to people and i'm like <laughs> yes and she's like well why don't they pay me to talk to people <laughs> and i was like well mom because she <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't do what I do. She, she never understood what I did for a living, and I don't really understand myself. Um, but, um, you know, Chicle was just kind of mentioned a little bit. Um, 
about the restorative thing, and I don't want to get too much into that work, but um, I think the work that, you know, at my age now, I'm starting to realize is just kind of teaching this really weird thing called love and compassion, um, where you, let's just say in the educational part, right, at a school site, it's not really about the students it's how do we change the whole campus right where adults actually make the time where whoever's in charge can actually start to change the system a little bit within the system and make time to genuinely listen to the teachers genuinely listen to a counselor um and be there for them first right do things with them not to them and um when you start doing that and at the leadership level that's when you start seeing it trickle down to the students. Um, that's just some of the work that I do. I have also, I've been very lucky to do that. A lot of parts all over the country, you know, are speaking at world conferences, international conferences about restorative, but from a larger perspective, from an indigenous worldview, which is it's very different from what you get in a three-day training. Mm-hmm. How do we look at restorative from a world from our world indigenous way right how do we transform a whole school looking at it from an indigenous perspective um i've been very blessed to do that but i first started my love i started writing poetry when i was just like some kid that didn't know how to read and write a lot of people well actually a lot of people that know me already know that like a lot of chicanitos and chicanitas i couldn't read and write in high school um and i say couldn't read and write because just because a student knows how to read doesn't really know it doesn't really mean he knows how to read because a lot of us growing up we read but we didn't know what the hell we were reading the comprehension wasn't there yep the comprehension which is everything so yes. just because you could read that it says this this doesn't really mean you know mm-hmm. um and i'll be honest at my age i still haven't developed that skill of like sitting down and reading a whole book and comprehending everything in there yeah. it's, it's, it just doesn't let me tell you about audiobooks yeah. <laughs> it's the best way to give my information that's how i get down that's a, that, that is and then that's a whole nother <laughs> issue man it's like uh i can't pay attention that long right so it's all the you grow up and if you know you start realizing shit i i you know i i can relate to so many students because i am them you know i had the yeah the inability to like I can't read I can't sit down I can't do this and I haven't changed too much um I was the class clown my senior year of high my junior and senior year of high school <laughs> and I realized that I was the class clown because I figured out you know what no one's ever gonna know that I can't do math never passed a math class in high school ever damn right never read a class you know the classics of mm-hmm. the whatever they were um because I couldn't read them. I couldn't finish a stupid book. So I left high school. I don't, I don't want to say I graduated, but I did. But they just kind of let you graduate. Um, I left not knowing how to read or write, right? Never passed a math class. And um, super long story short, somebody really got into me and made me think about going. Some I wasn't a Chicano at the time, right? And that's a whole nother conversation. But a Chicano got to me, and he's like, Mase, you know, we've been oppressed and colonized. I was like, what the fuck is colonized? Oh, am I allowed to cut? Absolutely it? not. What is going on? Oh, claro que sí. Fuck yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, like, we're colonized, and you have to go to college and do this for... I was like, well, I don't know what the fuck colonized, colonized means. Que colonizado? Que quien sabe? Cual colonia? Que, yeah, Libertad, right? parte alta. Exactly. Um but he got to me and he's like, you need to go. And I was like, bro, I can't even freaking read. I never even read a whole, I never read a book, right? I never passed a math class. How the hell am I going to go to college? Mm. And uh, he got me in there, man, at San Diego, uh, San Diego Mesa College. I call it Mesa Tech University. I, Mesa Tech. Yep. I enrolled there <laughs> and started from the bottom, dude, like the bottom of like reading with one book in one hand and literally a dictionary in the other. Cause most of the words, I didn't know what the hell they meant. Putting in the work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was determined after I realized what was happening to our people in this country, right? I was like, I have to get educated. Um, but it was hard. It was freaking hard because I didn't know how to do algebra. I didn't know how to do anything. Um, 
I'm still not, I'm still pretty bad at math. You know, I don't even know how to do fractions. You know, I, I really don't. It sounds ridiculous, right? But fuck you, don't tell me about fractions. I don't know what they are. I know it's like one eighteenth of, I don't know. See, I'm already getting confused. <laughs> I could eat half a pizza, and I think that's all the uh, the fractions. That's I the need. fractions. Yes, all of them. I think I know that one. Yeah, if I can eat half a pizza, <laughs> yeah. who, how much is left? Yeah. Half, Daddy. <laughs> you got it, Papa. Let's go. That's about all I know, <laughs> yeah. right there. But you know what? With modern technology and everything, I feel like math is going to turn into one of those languages that slowly and surely is just going to dissipate, and it's no longer needed. Because if my kids now, they'll just know they know to come and ask for our phone. Be like, well, like just have your calculator. Why do why do I need to do the work? If I said, no, nah, Papa, you got to go through the process gotta learn <sighs> or do yeah. we mm, do we that's a whole that man you have a lot of whole other conversations to have right yeah. um i'm very inquisitive yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so yeah i mean that that's that was my journey that's how i started i got educated went to mesa college and i transferred to ucsd um i was an honor roll student at ucsd <sighs> wow that's awesome i didn't even honestly i'm not lying to you guys they told me, oh, they called me in. The my counselor did. He's like, oh, congratulations, you're an honor roll student. I didn't even know what the hell that was, dude. I honestly didn't know, you know, that I was being recognized as an honor roll student. I was like, what the fuck's an honor roll student? What did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I'm uh, on a list. I'm on the what? list exactly. Because <laughs> the only list I was used to was the suspension list. No. And, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Saturday school list. Exactly. <laughs> I was the king of Saturday school, dude, you know? Um, but yeah, that, I, como dice mis estudiantes, I changed my life, you know? <laughs> I changed my life and uh, got educated, went to UCSD. And this is this was, uh, I still remember the day I saw Culture Clash, Chicano comedy troupe performing at UCSD. The biggest co comedy troupe in probably the history of this country at that time. And now they were huge, they were huge. Um, they don't they don't perform too much anymore. But I saw them on stage, Richard, Herbert, and Rick, and they came to UCSD, and I was mesmerized. I'd never seen Chicano comedy. Yeah. And it was mesmerizing. And I just sat there like, I don't think I blinked. I don't think, I, I just didn't move the whole time. And I was like, what the fuck? This is amazing, right? I want to do that one day. And um, I started my own comedy troupe. So what exactly is a comedy troupe? Is it like vaudeville, like the traveling uh, actors, but comedians in this sense? So it's it's sketch comedy. Sketch comedy. Ah, okay, okay. Uh -huh. So empezamos cuatro, cuatro hombres y cuatro mujeres. We started and uh, we just, one day, my wife and I, we went out, Alicia Chavez, we went out to eat and uh, we already decided we're going to start writing and this, but we're like, we don't even know how to fucking write. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're like, let's just do it. You just do it? What is it? Just like... Writing out your thoughts, what so you're going through. So we just started. Or? We, I wish we would have kept the freaking napkins. My wife and I oh, literally no, we, we went out to oh, eat, yeah. and yeah. we wrote the sketches, the ideas on a napkin, right? And I was like, oh, ooh, what about this one and this? And um, then the, then we developed them. Some of those sketches that we wrote 26, uh, 27 years ago, we still perform them today, right, yeah. on that napkin. Um, I mean, it's been 20 something years. We've literally performed all over the United States, as far as New York, all of the Southwest, Wisconsin. That's just the comedy troupe, right? Um, we published our own book. Actually, this is a this is this is a trip. Today, I'm going from here to a school where they're the kids are are going to be reading some of the octos that we wrote in that book, and then they're they're going to perform them, and then they're going to write their own. <laughs> That's awesome. Somebody from New wow. York yesterday <laughs> just sent me an email. That their class is doing the octos in New York. No way. Right? Um, we've had people write to me from Europe and they're like, you know, I don't know how the hell they got a hold of the book, but they're like, our students are going to be doing your octos. They, <laughs> actually, they wrote to me, but I just wanted to do yeah, that yeah, accent. Yeah. You know what, what I mean? Accent was that? That? Yeah, I have no idea what accent that was. Yeah. See, you but guys yeah. belittle me when I do accents <laughs> that no one recognizes. But then Masa comes on here and he's like, oh, <laughs> that, that, oh my that, that one sounded shit. European it for sure. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. European. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah, 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 a little German. Yeah, It's supposed to be British. Oh, no. Oops. So, I mean, it's it's... You know, you know what's really crazy, you guys? It's like, so we started performing because there was a need. There was a need in our community for us to see ourselves on stage. Okay, yeah. 
right? It wasn't because, oh, we want to be famous. Mm-hmm. We want to be. No, it's just like there is a need in our community, and it still is because you hardly ever see it. Um, and it just kind of, you know, at first you go perform and, you know, like, yeah, you guys have anything to pay us? They're like, well, we have some horchata or like some flour tortillas that Joelita made, and that's what you perform for, right? And that's how we started. And I mean, now we're in a, we're very blessed. Like, we're going to Colorado in a few months, and they pay for the flights, the hotels. They can pay all the actors' money. Touring that. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 not what it used to be, you know. But we never signed up for that. It just organically presented itself, took shape, and here you are. Yeah. 27 years, 26, 27 years later, yeah. still doing it. Still doing it. We've slowed down the pandemic completely. Le sacó el aire todo. Sac- no? todo. Um, so we kind of slowed down. Then I got a little sick. I, I was diagnosed with cancer last year, and um, that kind of slows. <laughs> cancer slows life down a little bit, gets in the way of shit, you know? Um so I don't I don't know what's gonna happen with the group yet. I we are gonna do the Colorado one. We have like four other shows they've asked us in San Francisco, San Jose, um, in Coachella, but I don't know I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm kinda like I'm kinda good right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I would like to do a couple shows in San Diego before we call it quits. You know? Hang it up, huh? Yeah, probably. That's going to be a tough decision to make when you cross that bridge eventually. <sighs> Bro, just talking about it right now, yeah, it's hitting me. I see it. I see it. It's almost like you're you're planning it out. That it's playing out in your head. Yeah. Imaginate, bro. That's yeah. decades of work. It's, decades of doing it. Is that. that something, though, that you can pass on to someone? Or is there, is there a baton? The yeah. yeah. Is there a baton you can hand off? You, you know, one, so one thing that we talked about restorative earlier um, is we mentored a lot of young people. We actually have right now two. We have two young people in the group that we mentored since they were young in high school. Um, and then a couple of other ones that we mentored, they, they're they kind of like jerks, dude. They decided to go off and go to college somewhere else instead mm. of staying here in San Diego. How dare they do How that? How dare they? <laughs> Obscene. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> The greatest land in the world. <laughs> <laughs> we've mentored some. I, I've thought about that. I was like, do, and it's a kind of a debate that that we have in the group. It's like, do we really need to do pass it on, or can we just say, you know what? That's it. El capítulo ahí, ahí queda. Ahí queda. Y ya. I kind of don't want the ahí queda. But that's kind of romantic in that sense, you know. It's like you know, it was it was an era, and it came to an end, yeah. and it would not do it much service to keep it going, unless you fully feel that somebody's there to pick it up and take it going. Yeah, I've been thinking about it a lot, a lot. And oh, and to go back to Culture Clash, we we performed several times with them. Do you guys remember? Yeah, you yeah. guys are a little bit younger, or a lot younger than me. Do you guys remember Fourth and B when it was? Of course, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Many a show there, so man. many good shows. Yeah, yeah, we did something with Culture Clash. That was our big like debut. Like we went to Fourth and B and we Damn. opened up for Culture Clash. Very nice. Yeah, my first co- Mexican comedy show that I ever saw was there, and this was probably I'm 44. And I was probably 21, so a little more than 23 years ago. Yeah. My first comedy show was there, and I remember it was um, Joey Jimenez. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was the Latin, it was pretty much the Latin kings of comedy yeah. before it was like the Latin kings of comedy. Because yeah. Paul Rodriguez was there, um, not George Lopez, but Paul Rodriguez, Jimenez, and a couple other. I was like, wow. And when you said our, there's a void in the community, we I agree. Like right now with social media, we get to see a bunch of people on stage and doing their thing that look like us. And I'm like, oh, well, that's awesome. You know, that that's very inspiring to see for somebody who wants to be in that role. But when it was back then, two decades ago, at 4th and B on stage, it was a rarity. For me especially, I remember when my wifey and I went, we're like, oh, wow, this is cool. Yeah. First thing we did is bought that DVD as soon as it came out. We're like, oh, now we can watch it at home whenever we want. Now it's available awesome. whenever you want, everywhere, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, but it's still, there's nothing like live. Mm-hmm. Right. Exacto. There's nothing like live. I Being mean, yeah, there. social media, social media, and like, it's weird to me. It, it's not, no es la misma cosa, man. Like, because you're watching live theater where human beings can make a mistake. Yes. Right? And it's funny. And it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it, it's and it's alive and you feel the vibration of those sitting around you laughing it's a whole social media you you could be by yourself right and it's not even remotely the same thing so yeah. it definitely has raised awareness on some of these people for me though you know yeah. more so it's like okay i can go watch them yeah you know like okay cool 
because without the social media, I would not know ninety percent of the people that I'd follow and actively go out and watch and perform. You know, that That's true. was awesome. Hell yeah! It was. It was. It could. They made it look small, but when you actually looked at it, when their lights were on, it was a big spot. It was a big. spot. It was yeah. a big spot, man. Yeah, I remember that. Nervioso cuando subiste, es okay. Um, something every every actor in our group goes through different things. Like I get nervous the day before. And then once it's showtime, I don't feel anything. There's some actors in our group that doesn't matter how much we perform, they're like throwing up backstage <laughs> right before it starts, you know, or they have anxiety. And I'm like, and they're like, you're not, you're not nervous. I'm like, I was nervous as hell yesterday. <laughs> you should have seen me yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just part of being human, right? Yeah. And and there's nothing wrong with it. It's it just happens, you know. And for everybody, it happens differently. But the moment you get on stage and you say your first word, se va todo. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, just gone. It's like, it's like magic. Because the brain knows, like, okay, bro, you got you to gotta turn that shit on Sink now. Sink or swim. It's, it's like <laughs> 300 people staring at you. And the brain will just, like, it just kicks. Kicks into another gear, you know. And pretty magical. Um, damn, now you guys are really making me think about this. But Good. yeah, so I've done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, I've done some teatro. I've been in a couple movies. I I was in a movie two years. It's actually in production right now with Paul Rodriguez. Oh, nice. Carlos Mencia and um, Machete, and who else was in that one? Almost every big Latino comedian was in that movie. Really? We just shot that. It's in production right now because then there was a strike, a writer oh, strike, a writer strike. A, yeah. You couldn't do any work, so it probably would have been out by now, um, but everything was put on pause. And Actually, literally, Paul called me. He's like, hey, I want you to be in this movie. And I went up to his house and just Damn. kicked it. And is that just th- those relationships, that network grew strictly by the hustle, huh? Just being out there. Just from the teatro. Exacto. Yeah, he, just from the teatro. I was in From the not mo- knowing how to read, man. Say. From That's starting crazy. at the bottom at Mesa Tech, Mesa, Mesa Tech, Tech you know, University, to be, to getting on on a separate <laughs> list than the ones you were used to, to being on the honor roll. Yeah, parlaying that into watching a show at UCSD, and then ultimately, look at you, movies yeah. in production coming out soon. Como yeah. se llama la película? The movie. It, I'm probably gonna get canceled. I'm saying it ahead of time. Hey, so if you're on here, hey, no, don't, don't say it then. Don't <laughs> say it. <laughs> There's a movie Welcome coming soon. Welcome to the Emo Brown podcast where people get canceled. <laughs> My daughter herself. She's Albert, like, I would have canceled you, Pa. <laughs> 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 I, was like, I told her what it was about. <laughs> <laughs> How so, did, when, so when, my own daughter's counseling me. Hi, Yadi. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. When when you were in college, it seems like the first thing you did was the teatro. At what point did you like? Where did education come into play? What well, started with actually poetry before teatro? I I I was I was somehow gravitated. Is that he said? They said gravitated. I was gravitated to poetry. My first love. My first stuff started as, as a as a poet, right? And um, I just, for some reason, I like poetry because it, well, now that I'm older, I realize because it's not, you don't have to read a whole, a poem, it's just a page, right? Mm-hmm. Entonces es más fácil. Entonces me trello, I, I was attracted to that. And I started writing little shit, right? It's like, the, whatever. And still never took a poetry class. But at Mesa College, Mesa Tech, at Mesa Tech University, one of the professors there, Cesar Gonzalez, may he rest in peace. Um, he's like, Masim, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're a good writer. I had a, a writing, a speech class with him and ch- it was speech through a Chicano perspective. That's literally what the class was called, right? Wow. Speech through a Chicano perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and he just, he's, he just saw something in me and I didn't see shit in me. Right. Um, he's like, no, you, you know, you're a great speaker and I like how you've done this. He goes, have you started writing yet? And I was like, yeah, I've written some stuff. And you read my stuff. He goes, you're, you're a good poet. I was like, what the fuck? I don't even know what I'm doing, bro. <laughs> what did you call me? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I entered a contest at Mesa, and I won second place in the whole college. And, wow. You know, there was a book published. Bien Bobo Morales style, yeah, bro. Dude, yeah. I, look at you. And I didn't, still didn't know what I was doing. I was just, just writing little things down, right? And um, I got to meet. There at, there at Mesa College with Cesar, I got to meet, like, all the big Latino writers at the time. Ana Castillo is the, um, the one that wrote, uh, uh, what's this guy, uh, Rodolfo um, Acuna. 
Oh, yeah. We met Acuna, and then we met uh, the other Rodolfo, the one from New Mexico, uh, who wrote Bless Me Ultima. Oh, yeah. The, I love that one. Audio book available or no? <laughs> there, there's a movie. There's, there's a, a movie. movie. There's a movie. <laughs> there's a movie. <laughs> I like pictures. So I got inspired by all these amazing, like the first time I saw like Latino, and I got to be with them, like these yeah. giants, right, in the room. And um, they inspired me to keep writing poetry. And then, you know, so I was like, okay. And then I went to, this is a, the crazy part. I go to UCSD, right? And I'm, UCSD, I don't think it's changed much. I used to go into rooms, classrooms with 400 students, and I was the only brown person in the room. And it was, I'm not going to lie, it was fucking intimidating, dude. You know what I mean? To be in a room and you're the only brown, you look around and you're like, fuck, this is like, <sighs> I don't belong here. Mm. Like, as much as you know you belong there, your brain tells you you don't belong here. But everything you see, right, you're making your eyes, everything your eyes are gathering and telling your brain, your brain's like, homie, you don't belong here. Mm. And it was very intimidating. And... um they had a big poetry contest at UCSD, one of the best colleges in the country, right? And I was like, man, I'm going to enter that. I don't know what I'm going to write. So one day in 1994, it, I went to sleep, and I woke up in the morning. I looked at my computer. There was a two-page poem on there. I was like, what the fuck? Who the fuck wrote this? I didn't even realize I had written. I woke up in the middle of the night and wrote this poem. It ended up winning first place at Damn. UCSD, dude. And it was about Christopher Columbus coming to the Americas. <laughs> what those night, night walking? No, night typing. Creating. Yeah, night, night typing. <laughs> the night typer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was like, I was so nervous because now here's this really political poem, right? Very yeah. much so. In 1492, you sailed the ocean, B-L-E-W, and profoundly lost like a greedy, confused child you landed mistakenly in the Americas. You were discovered by Tainos. Nobly you humbled them all, cutting their hands at the mercy of Capiti and gold. I must, for some odd reason, believe in freedom. That's how it started. Wow. Right? And I'm like, I'm going to read this Tension shit. Wow. Forever for sure. Yeah, Damn, like, yeah, yeah. Keep going. going. Keep going. going. You can't yeah. just stop there. <laughs> well, I don't remember the rest, but it's a great start, though. That's it's, definitely. It starts going through history, right, and what happened uh, through colonization. And I was like, why the fuck would they pick this poem? I, I'm not lying, dude. I was so nervous to go read this in front of all these people because I knew, like, everybody's going to be white in the room. Shh. I, this is about all of you. This yeah, exactly. <laughs> Your ancestors. <laughs> Respectfully, Barry. <laughs> From the colonized to the colonizer. And I, I, mm. Now, that time I was really, really nervous. I, I threw up before I went on the thing. I just walked out, threw up. I was like, they're going to kick. Because, you know, you're Shh. young you're, and, you're, and you're brown and you're in this, this. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you know they're like, oh, the first, the first place winner, you know, and I go up there and I'm just like, oh, what was the reaction? Like um, when they 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 bless you with the first place winner, what did the crowd say? What, what what was the reaction in the crowd? Well, you start realizing that, you know, you got mixed feelings. Like it's like I don't think anything like that had been done at that campus where you're really challenging like the institution in real in at the end, right? Um, and in that form, so I think there was some professors a little bit more conservative, but then there was a lot who, you know, they're not as conservative. And um, it turned out to be okay. You know, nobody stabbed me or took a shot at me. So, and I had Success. some guys with me that day too. I was so scared. I was like, bro, you guys got to roll me. Like, bro, you're reading a fucking poem at UCSD. It's not like, <laughs> what's going to happen? Pero nunca se sabe. I was nunca like, yeah, sabe, that's man. a big gang though. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. So I started with poetry, dude. That was my first love, and I still write a lot. Um, and then I went into teatro and um, acting and just being funny, dude. Being, so my trauma for that little boy who had who couldn't read and write because because of his trauma, right? If, and, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with the ACEs test, right, where there's an actual test. Like, you can see how trauma impacts you. Like, for example... I'll say, okay, um, I'll read the 13 the thirteen or 14 things that are on the test. It's like, if you come from an abusive home, if you come from a home where you had an alcoholic parent, if you come from a home where, you, or you were homeless, 
if you come from this, from the, and there's an actual score that you take, and then you look at your score, and that pretty much is connected to your trauma, mm. right? And then the score is also connected to your physical. It impacts your body physically. So there's a little, literally a score. You're, you're like, and unfortunately, I, I'm trying to remember. It was 13 because I just did the training last week with some folks. I'm at, I'm at, I have. 11 of the 13 points on that test. Oh, wow. And you look at it, you're like, fuck. You know? And not the kind of test you want to score high on. Not you know? definitely, no. You know, and, you know, I came here and documented for Michoacan. That's a whole other trauma, bro. You don't, you go to school and you don't know when you come home if your parents are going to be there or not. Because they've already been deported three or four times. Damn. So imagine being... In elementary school, bro, and, and you're that's all you fucking think about. But how are you supposed to learn? Mm, that's a lot on the plate to just focus on learning as a child. As a child. Because one thing that you should be doing as a child is just enjoying your life, not knowing yeah. about external responsibilities, what your parents have to do, anything. You just play, have fun, be a kid. But that's a lot of thrown your way. Yeah, and it's hard to have fun if you don't know if your parents are going to be home. And then how are you going to feed yourself? And being the older brother, I have to take care of my brothers and sisters. And oldest of how many? I have an older sister, but I'm the oldest male, so mm. it kind of still falls on your shoulders. Falls on, Tú eres el hombre de la casa, cabrón. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard that. Aliviánate. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I have. <laughs> Tú eres el hombre de la casa. And it's like, oh, dude, I'm five years old. I'm, I'm not the hombre of nothing, dude. I can't even pee straight. You know? <laughs> I still sit when I pee. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so I, 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 I like for young people to know that actually for them to really know their own trauma so they understand like why do they behave like this like a lot of, all of us in this room right here everybody in this room has certain behaviors that you want to work on that you hope you can get better at right mm -hmm. but the question is do you even know why you do it and if you yeah. don't know why you do it then it's never going to get better that's right it's impossible it's impossible it's like, oh, I, I, you know, most kids, I don't know. I don't know, fool. I don't know. And actually, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know why you fucking feel like socking this fool today. Right? We kind of know you're mad because your father got deported, right? But that's just the beginning of it. You're hurt. There's pain. But to really know, to get to the deeper part of it, even for us as adults, right? Es mucho trabajo. A lot of entangling. A lot of following that one thread all the way down into the soul. A lot, bro, and it doesn't go away when you're 56 years old. No, y'all got pensando que sí. I'm like, ah, maybe when I'm a little older, <laughs> things will just simmer down and I can relax and read a book. Well, maybe you're in a better place than I am. Nunca se sabe, bro. No, it's it's hard. It's hard work, and um, but that's been my journey. It's been my journey, and then I now I look back, you know, especially since I got cancer last year, and I took a whole year off from everything, dude. And actually, I'm barely starting to, like, take baby steps to come out to the world again. And I don't know if I'm going to, like, come out to the world or just going to go back into hiding. Todavía no sé. This is, like, a big deal for me to be here, you know, because I was like, do I really want Yeah, I'll do it, you know, and... So we'll see what happens. Maybe this inspires me to do teatro again. I don't know. Imagine. That would be awesome. Yeah. Good yeah. on you, yeah. Here at the warehouse. Oof. The warehouse. There we go. Right here. Yeah. It's a little. Well, whether you like it or not, as soon as that movie comes out, it's going to. Hell yeah. De las orejitas te va a sacar. No, when I get canceled, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we, the movie we've edited you out of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the movie, check this out. I'll tell you guys a funny ass fucking story, man. The movie's Paul wrote it. And um and Paul is a poet about the man. I you, you start realizing why we are comedians, right? You could see how cracked out the poor guy's brain is. Just like nonstop, like nonstop. Um, all of those guys. Felipe Esparza, you know? Evil. He was in the movie too, and just their brains are just fucking cracked out. And I was watching them, I was like, <laughs> oh fuck, that's me. I'm here because I'm a reflection of them. 
And we all have the same fucking collective trauma, bro. You know what I'm saying? And humor has been the, the, the one thing that's kind of saved us is the humor. And, pero estamos bien craqueados todos, you know? Um, and uh, so, so Paul writes this movie, right? He invites me and another friend of mine, Joey, over there at his house. And it's just us three. And he literally does the whole movie in front of us. All the voices, all the characters, like we sit there for an hour just listening to him. That's how cracked out that guy's brain is. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, though. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, damn, este bato se está bien craqueado, man. Este güey no duerme. No, este güey no, no duerme. Este güey no duerme. I'm like, no duerme. <laughs> you know? That's my new favorite word, by the way. <laughs> duerme? Craqueado. Oh, craqueado. Craqueado. <laughs> craqueado. The Puerto Rican said, está craqueado. Está craqueado el compa. El compa. Um... He does the whole fucking movie, bro. Because uh, we just asked, hey, so what's the movie? Well, well yeah, let me man. show you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just did every character. And I was just sat there like mesmerized. I was like, Fuck. That's awesome. But the movie is about, super long story short, is about, how many times have I said long story short? Not enough. Because mm -hmm. I told myself not to. My did wife, you really? <laughs> yeah, my wife's so always like, don't ever say long story short because you don't have short stories. I'm like, that's true. But let me tell you a <laughs> short story. No. Um, she, um so, so, so real quickly, it's it's a funny movie. The premise is that these vatos they go to jail, you know, in East LA, they they end up in prison, and they come out and they go to uh, uh, the group homes, the you know, like the halfway houses, and um, they meet they meet these guys, and uh, they're watching TV, and there's a there's an African American guy that was in jail with them, and he has his Christian like channel now, he told Pedro and. And they're like, man, that motherfucker ain't no Christian, dude. He's, he's, we know that fool. You know what I mean? And he's out there <laughs> preaching. And, you know, if you give now, the Lord will save you and all that fun 20 stuff. Twenty twin twin. Exactly. <laughs> Don't ask why the preacher have a new car, you know. Uh -oh. But um, <laughs> And they're like, dude, that guy's a scab. So they go over to that yeah, and con They're like, what's up, homie? Well, you're freaking fake. We're going to expose you. We're going to expose you. Yeah, and he's like, no, 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 no. If you guys don't expose you, I'm going to show you how to do this in the Hispanic community, ¿verdad? Oh, and they're like, oh, damn. So they literally start taking classes on how to do it. <laughs> Hustling you know? yeah. 101. <laughs> how to, Hustling Jesus 101. Yeah. <laughs> this is the part where I get where I get uh, canceled by all the Christians out there. Hi, Christians. Hi. Um, so. <laughs> Sale el profe. I said, hi, Christians. Hey. <laughs> 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 uh, so so they start getting the hustle right and they they learn and i'm i'm one of the characters so they you know they they have like the, their own tv show for Chica latinos you know market latinos and they're like paul comes out as this crazy like minister dude or whatever they're called and he's like healing everybody i'm one of the guys in the halfway home he meets and he trains me how to like heal like, you know what I mean? They come up to me and they're like, <laughs> yeah, they talk. I say some stuff. <laughs> but, dude, this is what's crazy. It was all fucking improv. I had no script. Neither. Oh, wow. So, Paul, I'm sitting there the first day we're shooting. And he's like, okay, this is the scene. I'm going to come in here. And it's like us, right? We're sitting down and Paul comes in and he's like, tell me what happened to you, my brother. And then you just have to improv and Paul's going to make something up. You have to make something up on and the chinga. spot. On the spot. No script. And I was like, where's wow. my script? And he's like, Paul doesn't want you to have a script. And I said, what do you mean he doesn't want to have a script? He goes, no. I like says, you, you can improv. Hell yeah. And I was like, all right. It's on then. Right? So he comes up to me, dude. And and uh, um, he, I had, should I, should I give away the, the part <laughs> of the movie? Well, anyway, I'm not going to go there because that's yeah, the part yeah, where yeah. I get canceled. But... Um, <laughs> Dude, the guy just fucking improvs, and then he comes up to me, and I know I have to improv. And first of all, you're trying not to break character because yeah. when he was with Chicle, it was hilarious. When he got to you, it was fucking hilarious. And now he's coming to you, and the whole time you can't break character. And I'm not even <laughs> thinking of what I'm going to say. I'm just waiting for the moment for him to, to touch me, to do the healing, and, and something will come to me that I'm going to say, dude. Yeah. So he comes to me, and I do my line, and... um. I almost got him to start break character. He broke him. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
And it was pretty funny. And then he got me back. Like, we we're trying to make each other laugh on purpose, you know? He ah, got me with a really good one. That's a great game to play. Yeah. <laughs> I think we play that every day. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, was it, is the whole thing that way? Like, no one had a script or some, uh, there was some there script? There was a script, but then Paul just gave a lot of room for improv because he trusts the comedians that yeah. are on there. That's a lot of trust. It's a lot of that's trust. That's a lot of trust. on purpose. Well, especially like Felipe Esparza, bro. Like, you let that guy go, and he's like, He's like a wild horse. You know what I mean? It's, he may never stop, too. He, exactly. <laughs> it's the way we're just watching him. Like, he feels like he just keeps going and going. Yeah. I'm like, hell yeah. Super craqueado. Yeah. Super funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. He's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, so that's, you know, I'm telling you guys, it's, it's so surreal. Like, so surreal that I had an opportunity to be with these guys that I like, you know, it's pretty surreal. It's like, what the fuck am I doing here? That's sick. You know what I'm saying? But they're your friends, though. Well, you had, you know, it was compas. You had los craqueados, compa. Was like part Puro vato craqueado. That's what we need. Puro los vato craqueado. Los craqueados. Los craqueados. I like that. Los craqueados. Los craqueados del norte. Sí. Los craqueados del norte. <laughs> del sur. <laughs> los craqueados. Estamos craqueados. There it is. That's the theme song right there. Before uh, any more short stories, sorry. there's another thing that, that <laughs> Macedonio sorry. has been doing in the community, which is a círculo de hombres. And we we borrowed or, or adapted that experience in something that we're doing here in in our space, the men's group. The, the men's group that we call it the the link up, totally. um, and that's something that, that I think you've touched on it throughout. Even just sharing your own story of of understanding who you were as a kid and how that has impacted your life, um, and I think as men, right, like having that space to to share that those thoughts or beginning to untangle and, and figure out why we do the things we do um and i could tell you we we started um in july in, in june july was our first meeting once a month um and has been already like really very uh, consistent too yeah consistent but, but like a powerful experience for men in our community um, to do that, so you know, I also want to say thank you for giving us the blessing to to go for it, um, and to to be doing that work. And you've been doing it for how many years now? Well, it's probably close to thirty now, because um, I started nineteen ninety two. How many years is that? Nineteen ninety two to twenty twenty two is thirty. Yeah, thirty. So 30 over thirty. Yeah, so yeah. thirty two. Yeah, so Chicle brings up a good point, and I'm waiting for my royalties too from the circle. I'm supposed to be getting um, yeah, te yeah. pagamos en pizza, compa. Tax every dijo, time. Le, hace rato dijo tortillas. Tortillas, no, tortillas. tortillas. De harina <laughs> o de maíz. So just just for the record, you guys, flour tortillas are not tortillas. Okay. Oh, Wait, what? That's it's not, a sandwich. What is a, it? That's not a tortilla. What is it? It's a Hostia. <laughs> that's a round flour thing. A mm. tortilla is only corn because traditionally we didn't have flour here. Oh. So you want to get on my bad side, say here's a flour tortilla and I'll throw it at you. Ooh, Damn. flying saucer. In protein. <laughs> <laughs> How do you eat burritos, Masi? I won't throw it. But <laughs> it doesn't. I don't eat burritos. But flour tortillas are not tortillas, just for the record. Write that uh, down, Barry. Yeah. It's, it's no, not it, a burrito, it's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> yeah. um, but the the work with the with the men that Chicle was talking about, um, and what the the recognition I just got recently. Uh, with the Prebus Foundation, which is the largest foundation in San Diego, I want to give them a little shout out for for acknowledging the work that we're doing in the community. Is, um, I mean, we've been God, so many young men that we've mentored for so many years now, and we have our first doctor, like doctor physical physician. We have many guys with PhDs. We have, um a little bit of everything in our circle now and our circle doesn't end it's not like we go to a school there's just a quick example we'll go to a school let's just say memorial we start a circle with the kids that are in middle school then we follow them into the high school when they graduate they they come back and they give back to the community so we have guys that have been in the circle forever forever that is awesome and they still give and they still um mentor others to, or they've started their own circles in different places paint it forward yeah and it's really it's it's that's been for me that's 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 been a real beautiful blessing we've collaborated with the reservation now for almost 30 years um and every year 
in August, we have a three-day rites of passage ceremony um, on the reservation. Over 100 guys show up, and um, it's three days. There's no cell phone service. Um, you disconnect, and you're just there to heal, cry, go through every emotion, connect to Mother Earth, to the to the owls that are out there. There's a mountain lion that lives very close to where we are at, the coyotes, and um, it's kind of what we were talking about, the ACEs score, right? It's like a lot of times, and you guys know this, we we're always told not to cry. No, los hombres no lloran, cabrón, you know? And um, so if you don't cry, where does that go? Like, where are those tears that are supposed to be released? Where do they go? Mm -hmm. They don't just dissipate. Is that a word? Dissipate? Yes. Oh, they turn into laughs, no? Something. Something. It's got to come out somehow. It, 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 it doesn't manifest in tears. It's got to come out somehow. And it usually comes out in anger, mm -hmm. rage, mm -hmm. pain, mm -hmm. right? Um, because even being the class clown, it's manifesting itself. We're <laughs> still hurting you. Yeah. It's still hurting you because society sees you as a fucking class clown. Kick his ass out of the room. Suspend him. He's not, he's worthless, right? Mm. Just throw him away because all he does is make people laugh. <laughs> So we've been doing that for so many years. Hopefully you guys could go this year at the end of August um, for three days up there on the reservation. It's it's pretty life-changing for a lot of men um, because think about this. Like how many of us take three days just to focus, really just focus on ourselves without looking at the stupid phone? Three days of disconnecting from everybody and everything. That means your children and your wife, which is really hard it's when, a you're, difficult task, when you're yeah. a when you're a responsible man, right? Whatever the fuck that means. Hombre responsable. Right. Sí. <laughs> ¿verdad? Whatever that means. Well, right. a responsible man takes care of himself. Mm. But in our culture, we're the last ones. We're always the last. You know, and it's like I'm wearing this, I wore this on purpose, this fila, because when I was a little boy, my sister got me into, I used to play soccer because that's what Mexicans do. Duh. But she got me into tennis um, because oh. I broke both of my shin bones playing soccer in my ninth grade year. Ouch. Um, yeah. I, the, well, I didn't break them. A goalie went right through my shin and the shin came out of this. Side. Oof. Ouch. And that was it, dude. It changed the traje trajectory of my life because I couldn't really play soccer. I had a lot of fear now, mm. you know, ya no era el mismo. I, I, I wasn't the same player. So one day my sister's like, well, you should start playing tennis. And I was like, I'm not going to play tennis. You know, that's stupid. It's like, who can play tennis, right? <laughs> and she's like, well, I'll beat you in it. And I was like, Oof. you're not going to beat me in it. <laughs> exactly. So she... Me llevó a jugar tenis, me puso una chinga, mm -hmm. thrashed right. me, dude. I was so <laughs> fucking mad that my sister beat me in something. So I was practicing Hell behind yeah. her back the whole time, and I said, I'll pay you in two months. She's like, all right, I'll beat you in two months. But she didn't know <laughs> that I was practicing. Hell no yeah. clue. Went out, played with her again, and I beat her, you know, and she's never beat me ever since that day. Um, but I started liking the sport because I couldn't play soccer. And, dude, I used to play... I started playing on the team. If they did like the CIF, like paperwork, our, every match we played, we would have been disqualified because I never had the GPA to play. Mm. Oof. I was happy because I don't know if you guys remember, you have to have a 2.0. 2 yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Dude, I had I had under a 2.0 and I had the what the U's and the N's. Uh, unsatisfactory unsatisfactory. <laughs> citizenship. <laughs> so, bro. Wow. He had to see it said craqueado. It's not craqueado. Craqueado. Like, yeah, just have the citizenship. Yeah, dude. And, and uh, my, you know, my tennis coach actually knew she didn't fucking care. She didn't. That's when I got my first taste of what restorative is. Mm. She didn't care. She's like, fuck, if I don't let this little Mexican kid play, he's going to. He's going to end up like all the other kids. He's going to find a different outlet, and it might not be mm -hmm. as positive as tennis. And that lady still calls me today. She gets me gigs to speak. Wow. The tennis, that is awesome. The tennis coach. That is awesome. Miss Ann Rosser, bro. Saludos a la Miss Ann Rosser. Yep. Hell yeah. Yep. Hell yes. So that was my first taste of restorative work. I was like, fuck, this lady, she put everything on the line. 
for this little brown kid. Because we would have, like, that would have been a big scandal, right? Like, knowing that kids playing in tournaments and, you know, and. And, and you were winning. Yeah, I was winning. I was the most valuable tennis player in my high school, my Damn. senior year. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think that's the one sport no one would suspect. Yeah. 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 It's right. such a prestigious sport, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. You show up with a little nice little vest. You're uh-huh. over there doing See? your thing. Oh, dude, my wife, when I first met her 30-something years, 33 years ago, she first saw me. And, you know, I tried to pick up on her in my little white adidas shorts Ooh. and shit you know <laughs> and she was like uh what's this little dude it's wearing? okay i'm a tennis yeah. player i'm a tennis exactly. player yeah. it's part of the routine i still have pictures of me i thought you were gonna say i still got the shorts i was like hell yeah but no i, I couldn't rock those anymore only because my wife wouldn't let me wear them but anyway that's besides the point um because i'm all in because i would <laughs> no, i'm just kidding um but yeah so i started playing this game right but but it was like I needed it to now because like a lot of us Chicanos, like my friends were going to jail, dude, or they were getting killed, you know. And it was like you got to hang out with somebody who's – it was just – so I played that sport. And um, this little jacket I just got, I like I said, I was doing this little training. And um, they had this big tournament two weeks ago in Coachella. Um, it's called the Indian Wells Tennis Tournament. And one of the guy, I did a training for three days, and one of the guys got me a free ticket, free tickets for me and my wife to go watch the tennis, dude, which is tacarito, eh? But I saw this fila. When I was a little boy, there was a player named Bjorn Borg. Bjorn Borg. I remember all remember the Jays. Borg? Yeah, mm-hmm. all the Jays in his name. Oh, Bjorn yeah. Borg. Yeah, yeah. Dude. He was a stud. He was the G. Yeah. Homie. He was Pelo like, rojo también, man. Si. Bien cortito. Yeah, yeah. And he wore his little fila. And I, oh, I, that guy was awesome. I would see this fila that he wore, and I was like, oh, I'll never be able to afford that. It's like, mm. never. It's like, for me to have something like this is just a dream, right? And so we go to this tournament this couple weeks ago, right? And they freaking, I've never even seen this anywhere. I thought they stopped making them. They had this Fila sweater. That's a new one? A brand new, bro. Damn. That looks vintage. Yeah, yeah. I thought well, that was from the vintage, 80s. it's vintage, but it's new, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. It's vintage, but it's new. I Red, mean, yeah. Retro pop. Re- whatever. So they were yeah. selling it. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, whatever. It is. Shut up, yeah. Chicle. No, no, Let whatever. me tell my short story. No, no, no. No te craqueado, tu chico. Retro pop. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, well, whatever. <laughs> Anywho. It's a new retro, but yeah. So I saw it, and I was like, oh, my God, but look at the price. And my wife's like, Mase, you can afford it. You can afford it. And I was Hell like, yeah. yeah, but again, as men, mm-hmm. and maybe this happens with women. Maybe I'm just stereotyping it. But I could only talk about our experiences, young men. You don't spend money on yourself. Tu familia es primero. Yes, sir. And I don't know if they told you this or they mm. taught you this growing up. It's like, nope, your family's first. Your family's first. Your family's first. And you don't fucking buy yourself a Fila sweatshirt because your family needs that money. And even if it's not told to us, I feel that... A sense of guilt comes out. Anytime I buy something for myself, I'm like, e-. somebody's gonna say some shit. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I always yeah. feel I always feel a little nervous. But mm. it's there. It's, it's so true. ingrained. Yeah, it's ingrained. It's man. ingrained, right? And my wife is not like the she she's the most amazing woman on planet. She's like, Master, you deserve this. That's Hell awesome. Yeah. Uh, that is awesome. Do you know how much you're gonna make in this training? It's yeah. like in these three days, you I'm not gonna say the number, but I make an outrageous number, right? She's like, uh, you can afford this sweater. <laughs> Buy three colors. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, ah. Oh, and here I start doing that dance again. It's like, ah, oh, I don't deserve. Ah, oh, it's it's too much. You know what she does? She fucking goes and takes it off the rack, and she's like, walks over. Dame to tu pay cartera. For it. Exactly. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> she has. We have joint account, so she walks over there, and the whole time, like, oh, I'm still like doing that stupid. Like, oh, that shit, bro, 56 years old, you're still struggling with that, hmm. right? That's so ingrained. And I, this isn't, I'm not saying it to brag, but all of us, dude, we can all afford to buy this. It's not super expensive, it, but it's not that, right? Mm-hmm. It's like you're spending it on yourself. It's what it represents. Yeah. yeah. You know, instead I could buy her whatever. Yeah. Well, she buys whatever she wants anyway. But, um, <laughs> you know, but it's just, it's still ingrained in us. Yeah. You know, so I was like, no, you know what? I finally convinced myself, you know what? I deserve it. I worked my fucking ass off. I deserve yeah. it. 
but it's still like, ugh. So that those are some of the topics that we discuss as men, right? How ingrained that is in us, and um, do we genuinely really make the time to take care of ourselves? Do we genuinely do that? Yeah. Or do we lie to ourselves about? I was gonna say, I think that's what it is. We just make amends with ourselves. We say, hey, good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Let's let's just keep it going. Yeah. Let's keep it moving. So part of that work that, that I was telling you on the reservations, those three days of really like self-reflecting and and disconnecting, it's kind of scary to leave your wife and kid um, when there's no cell phone Sin service saber que anda for three days. Yeah. You have to let go, bro, at a whole nother level, right? I mean, you're talking about letting go. And you have to be in a really good relationship that your wife understands why you're going, mm. you know? Um, so it's layered, right? It's layered. You have to let go completely. Like you want to know what's going on at your house, right? And you're like, you're out there. It's, you know what, bro? It's so weird what happens within the within two hours. You let go. Cause, Quick transition. Because you know what, your fucking spirit needs it, bro. Yeah, your spirit's dying, like dying of thirst for it. And you're not checking your phone anymore because there's no phone service. And sounds you realize, intimidating. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. It sounds intimidating. Have man. you ever done anything like that, Chicle? Is that something you've ever no, done? No. I, I think this is the year oh. that <sighs> Damian and I will go. You guys heard it, eh? Yeah. You mm. heard it, Selena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she's been encouraging me to to attend. Um, but I think this is the year that, that uh, also that training that you sent me. Yeah. I need to sign up for that. I know Celia's encouraged because she called me. She's like, fucking take cheek clip. Yeah, what did yeah, yeah. She said, he needs it. <laughs> you know what is funny? You. I, I feel like. She didn't say that. Culturally, the tide may be turning, you know, to, to even if it's minuscule. But for my wife to tell me and encourage me to go to one of our link ups, she's mm -hmm. like, oh, man. And said, you, it'll, you'll probably benefit greatly by going. If it's not just for your. Yeah, if not for you, then for us. You yeah, know, exactly. a, a better, a better version of you. Yep. For the is boys. much, is much, much more beneficial to us than it would be just you know not going. Yeah. It's it's the old adage. It's like the the the, the airplane. As soon as you know what is what does a little book say on the airplane when you're, in case of emergency, if this falls, make yep. sure you breathe first before you take care of everyone else. Because if you're not taking care of yourself first, yep. how do you expect, you know, to be alive to take care of those around you? That's right. 44, it's barely starting to seep into the thick skin that I have. You know, I'm very hard headed. I'm very, I don't want to say stubborn, but it takes a long time for certain things. You could say to it. like, yeah, okay, I'm stubborn that a yeah. lot of things don't um, penetrate the dome. Mm -hmm. You well, know, and you have to think about your socialization. I don't think stubborn is a real thing. It's how, how told you, Chicle, see? Yeah. How have you been socialized? <laughs> Retro pop <Yeah>. sandwich. <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> Um, what are the, you know, what are beliefs that you've created about yourself? Right. Yeah. And For me personally, start challenging like, them. yeah, yeah, true. Mm. Start challenging them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't lose. Can't take time off. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Can't take time off. Yeah. Dude, right now, even though I had cancer right now, I still have like 230 hours of vacation time I haven't taken. Because we can't take time off. Yeah. Well. Too many people depend on me. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Oh, I, I shoulder so much responsibility. But if you take a step back, dude, like realize, like, I ain't shit. It's a fucking lie. Yeah, it's a fucking myth. Yeah. We tell true. ourselves that I shit. I remove myself, shit keeps going. Mm -hmm. It'll take a second or two to adjust, but we're not as important as we think we are, man. You said it. You and know? When you get cancer and you're laying there on, the, on the table, and this is crazy. My mom died of cancer the same age as me. Oh, wow. When I got cancer last year. Same age, Damn. right? And the same, so when she got cancer, they said, oh, you know, we're going to take it out. It was right here on her leg. We're going to take, we're going to cut her open, take it out. It looks like she'll be fine afterwards, right? And when they cut her open, it spread through her whole body. Ugh. So here I am at the same age, same exact age. And what, what do you think they told me? Te lo vamos a quitar y hay para todo. Same story. So here I go, bro. I'm laying in this hospital. 
and we're looking at an hour away from getting surgery and that that little record starts to play mm. so now you're fighting a demon dude like every demon on the planet is in your face it's in your room he's walking around it's sitting on the bed with you giving you water and he's telling you you know what you're gonna fucking die just like your mom on that bed Because it's impossible not to believe that. Yep. How can you have another reality running through your head? That's the only example of it you have. Es todo. The same age, bro. So I, I'm laying there and finally I got to the point where I said, you know what? If it's time for me to go, it's time for me to go. I'm just going to let go. You know, my wife's going to be fine. My daughter's going to be fine. I can't do anything about it. I just have to let go, right? It's my time to go with my ancestors, then it's my time. So I go and they, they cart you in that room, dude, and I look in the room and you see all the fucking knives and shit. Mom is. And I'm like, uh, I don't think I'm supposed <laughs> to see this. I literally oh. told the nurse that. I said, Damn. I don't think I'm supposed to see all this, right? The moment I said that, the guy just goes, Callate. <laughs> Mimis. That's Ew, it. Oh, man. You're out, and you wake up, and and you're in the fucking bed, and you have a scar from here down. And they're like, we got, we think we got all of it. And it's like, oh, did it spread through my body? Am I going to survive? Right? Mm. And luckily, it's uh, it's been a year, and I'm cancer-free. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um but it's still in the back of your mm -hmm. head. How could it not be? You can't outrun that. You can't outrun That's it. It's going to be there. Yeah. Um, so there's changes. Uh, there's there's some things I'm doing a lot different. Like I, said, I, I literally took a year off from the world. I traveled. I went to Yellowstone. I went to Zion. I went to Vegas. I went to Mount Shasta. I went to Michoacán to see the Monarcas. I went to Mexico City three times. I went to La Paz, which is a magical place. If you haven't been to La Paz and Baja, oh my God, that's one of the most sacred places on this planet, man. Hmm. It's the best kept secret in the world. The Mexican government does an amazing job of taking care of that, uh, the the reefs and um, you know all the fishes there. I mean, you walk in the water, dude. There's like fish right there. You can see them, and it's anyway. I went to La Paz. My little brother's over there. Um, I just traveled. I just traveled to places of healing and and uh, really had to reflect on my journey. It's like, okay, bro, like, how are you going to do things differently? And I thought I was taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. But the pedo is, for us that do this work, is that I was working with so much trauma, like 24-7. It's like I don't have an 8-to-5 job. I wake if I once we turn my phone on, I can show you people are already texting me. Oh, Masa, can you come do this? Oh, Masa, can you do that? Right? I guarantee you, we just this little time we've been here, and that's nothing to be proud of or brag about. I'm not fucking bragging about. It. I'm not proud of it. The, the The other question is, what was the need for Masa to play the savior role, and where does it come from? Right? I know where it comes from. Having an alcoholic father. And you having to take care of your family when your dad got drunk. Shoulder the responsibility. El más grande de los hombres. And then you have to work on just fuck, let it go of all that shit, bro. Because no human should have been doing all the work I was doing. Manifested itself right here. 13 centimeter tumor of cancer. Just sitting there hanging out. And I started realizing it's all of the people that I've worked with right here. Boom, boom, boom. Verdad? So the, the question is, what am I doing differently? How am I doing it? And I am, I, my life has changed completely. That's why I tell you, I don't know if I want to do teatro anymore. Mm -hmm. it was, yeah. You know, it's fun, but it takes a lot of fucking energy, you know? <sighs> and and the whole, like, commotion afterwards, people want to talk to you and <laughs> this and that. and. Chente enfadosa. See, pinche gente. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's hard, bro. It's hard. And um, 
I'll do it one last time. Hell We're yeah. gonna do one last little run and see what happens. And um, put that on the calendar, Chicle. We got we got to make yeah. make yeah, sure we head out for me. that. They just asked us to perform at Chicano Park, Chicano Park Day in the Kiosco, right? Oh, nice. And we turned it down. Oh. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. oh. Damn. <laughs> and I was like, no, I don't, I don't, this, I never thought I would be saying this. Like, I don't want to be around all those people. Yeah, that makes sense. I never thought I would be saying that, right? Yeah. Whoa, why are you throwing stuff, bro? Oh, don't, dang, he's don't upset. Get mad. Come on, man, this is a nice place. Okay, we will do it at Chicago Park Day. <laughs> China, do it. We will perform. God, can throw <laughs> shit at me and stuff. Pinchy Godzilla he is bringing the ball on my leg. I didn't know he was going to get that upset. You so got to perform. Oh, man. Man. Jeez. So right, compose, compose. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Take a breath. So, yeah, dude, what it, that tells you so much. It's like, I don't want to be around all those people. Yeah. And before that was like the goal. That was like, yeah, put me in mm-hmm. stage. And that's where I shine. Why? Because I used to do that as a little boy. I only knew it was to perform, mm. to get out of a class. But that little boy doesn't need to do that anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I think you, you experience something that put life in a. A very clear perspective of, of our time here on on this place, right? And being able to to prioritize yourself, your well being, and and doing the things that you love, while still be, like doing what you do, right? Because I, th- I think part of the work you've done and the accomplishments is because it's you, right? It's in your heart, and and it comes naturally. So it's no surprise that people continue to reach out to you for all the things that you do right the from the art to the healing and and how all of those things overlap because yeah. i imagine like so much of the 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 sketches that you do is is us right like representing mm-hmm. our communities and and in the work that you do in schools with students is providing them a, an example of of what things can be like you know and and like modeling that for adults. So mm. I think last year we, we had a conversation just a little over a year ago about that of, of prioritizing ourselves and, and making decisions for the long term, you know, and, and um, that conversation helped me a lot in, in a transition that I made mm. um, because it's true, you know, like things we, we do notice when things are, impacting us beyond the stress right like like you feel this pressure but also physically how things manifest themselves so i think like your experience has also helped me keep things in perspective and and know to know how to let go right to not let certain things bother me and realize that there's things that are out of our control with how how others experience things and and we have power of how we interact with those things right and and the power we give them um, so I just want to say thank you, Masa. Oh, thank you, bro. We're just literally just a reflection of each other on this planet, you know, and you spend any time with anybody, you realize it's, they're just you and you're just dumb. And we're just like one big ball of energy on this planet that's moving together. You know, it doesn't matter if you're like a right wing conservative Republican, you're still the same being on this planet. It's because your brain's telling you a certain story it doesn't mean you're not the same being. We are, you know. How much time do we have? Because I want to tell you guys a crazy fucking story. All right. That sounds like the best way to end it right there. Let's see. Yeah. We got time for a short story. Let me, let me, let me dig in <laughs> real quick. <laughs> so <laughs> I saw Oppenheimer so I see yeah, yeah. last night. Just wow, just mind blowing. That movie is so good. I love movies, I love to analyze them and kind of see. I didn't know what the big deal about this one was. I finally saw it. Just what a fucking great movie! But I, I, I want, I'm saying that because I want to share an experience I had as a human being on this planet. I think Selena knows, she knows all my stories. Unfortunately, a poor lady has to. Unfortunately, heard all my stories at one time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> She's like, oh, now I know. 
<laughs> I know how we say craqueado in Purépecha. We need to figure that out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, so I was in this, uh, I did a three-day uh, training with an agency up in, uh, up, uh, what is it, um, Santa Cruz or Santa Barbara? Were the redwood trees are in Santa Cruz or Santa Barbara? Who knows? Santa Cruz. Santa, Santa Cruz, Cruz, right? Yeah. That was a guess. Chicle. Yeah. <laughs> Not been there. <laughs> um, so I did a training with an agency out there. I trained their staff for three days, and, you know, I was up there with them and um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So Friday, um, Saturday we're supposed to – they had a sweat lodge up there in the mountains, and I was going to run the sweat lodge for them. So it's, a, it's a native indigenous ceremony that I, my elders have given me permission to run for the people. I was going to run it on Saturday, but it started pouring, like, pouring it was raining so hard the cars couldn't even get out of the the cabins we were in so we had to cancel the sweat lodge it's just because we have to start a fire and you can't you can't start a fire in the rain but not in that type of rain or those mountains it's just anyway so we so what the brother that brought me up there is like hey ma, i said we're not gonna we're gonna cancel it i said all right you know he's like i said well let's just get some rest because it's been a long day and he's like no i want you to do something i was like what do you mean he goes I know, bro, you could do something crazy. And I was like, uh, your people aren't ready for this, right? And he's like, come on, come on, let's do it. Anyway, long story short, we walk up to the highest. Now, every, everything in the story is really important, the details. So we, we're already in the mountains with these giant redwoods. But there's a cabin actually even higher than us, and, and we have access to it. So I said, all right, bro, get your people. We're going to go up there to the top of this we go up to this cabin. The cabin's in a circle, and there's, like, glass. So you could see outside. It's just an incredible view, right? All these giant redwoods. Redwoods is the key to this whole story. So we start doing something, and um, to make a long story short, what it is is opening up portal, a portal, right? And I know people are listening. They're like, yeah, that fool's fucking crazy, right? And, and um it's it's i'm just gonna tell you i'm not telling you guys to tell you because i think i'm better than people i'm not telling you because i want people to believe the story i'm just telling you what happened and it's well, crazy yeah it's fucking let me get comfortable <laughs> <God. Yeah. laughs> fucking portal dog. so we start there's a way to do it I, this is the third time i, I was fourth time i was doing it and i kind of was hesitant to do it but i we started doing it everybody's in a circle there's a whole thing you do um, things started opening up. People were tripping out. Everybody, there's two people that go in the middle and the circle does something and I help facilitate it and they go to their own space. Sometimes the people that were in the middle, even though their eyes were closed and they were almost like sleeping, they even s saw themselves in the other person's vision. They started to cross each other, right? Like if Chicla's back was to me and I'm my eyes are closed and there's a chant going on or whatever, like Chica's literally describing the same town that I'm in at the same time. Wow. Right? We had this one brother. He's uh, He comes up there. He's like, Macedonio, man, I hear a lot of shit about you, but I don't believe this <laughs> shit. I don't believe in any of this crap. I said, all right. He says, but I'm going to go in the middle. I said, all right, bro. Ingaso se metió. He goes in the middle, and I went. And that was it. He was just sleeping that fast. He's like, <laughs> just out. Just like. That, and I didn't know that was going to happen. I was like, oh, fuck, right? Uh, I, a lot of things I did not know were going to happen, and this is probably why I'm never going to do it again. He goes through his own journey. He explains to us what happened when he was in prison, and he realizes this and that. It's just he had an incredible experience, right? So then I, sit, I, sit, I tell the brother, I said, hey, bro, I said, uh, I'm going to go in the middle. He's like, what? I was like, yeah. If something I have this big condor fan, which actually helps to open the portals, big condor fan. And I said, here, hold on to this, bro. And if something happens, you got to snap me out of it. He's like, what do you mean? <laughs> I was like, just snap me out of it. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you'll know. You'll know. <laughs> right. I'm going in. And I've never gone in the middle because I'm usually making sure like, you know what I'm saying? So I go in there, bro, and I close my eyes, I open them, and there's a giant alien standing right there, another being from another planet, standing right where, where my seat was. And I'm like, oh, fuck. 
and we start talking and he starts communicating with me telepathically. He's probably about seven feet tall, right? And uh and and I'm like, Who the fuck are you, bro? And he's like, This is us in the future. It's like you guys are gonna destroy yourselves with nuclear weapons. Those that survive evolved to look like us. It's already happened. The bean tells me it's already happened. Time is an illusion. There's no such thing as past, present, and future. He goes, the future's already happening. I am the future. It's already happening. And he's just standing there. His mouth is closed because he's talking to me telepathically. And he says, uh, he says, uh, we don't need our mouths anymore. Everything that you have, like Chicle has you have, is all primitive. Your ears are primitive. Your eyes are primitive. It's a very primitive stage that we're in right now as humans. And remember, at one time, we, we were more primitive than this because we couldn't even walk straight. <laughs> you know? Everybody was fucking us up as human beings. Everybody and their mother would fucking beat the shit out of us. Excuse my language. Sir. And we've evolved, <laughs> right? We're evolving. We've been evolving as humans. You could tell that we used to have a fucking tail. You could see at the back. We've evolved. And so this being's like, you've already evolved outside of using this. You've already evolved about using your eyes. Like, That's so primitive. It's like, we just eat like this. We see a tree. We just whoosh, take the energy off the tree. That's evolution. He's like, it's already happening. He's telling me, this is you in the future. You, you guys in the future. And I'm like... What the fuck? So anyway, I get out of the, the, the thing and I people are like freaking out because they they didn't see it. But okay, here's where it gets even crazier, dude. So I go back to my seat and all of a sudden the door opens. <laughs> Boom! Slams open. And the door is um the door opens this way out. Uh, so the wind is outside. There's no wind inside to push the door open. It's impossible. You know what I mean? Somebody has to push the door from the inside to open it. The wind doesn't open doors from the outside. If It would push it in, right? If it was the wind. completely the opposite, the lights go off. And now this is where I'm starting to fucking go, oh, Masa, what the fuck are you doing, bro? What the fuck did you get yourself into? <laughs> but I have to remain calm. All right. Right? Because I'm doing this this madre. So I'm like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. I was like, hey, bro, go check the light switch. You know, maybe it's on a timer. He walks over, he's like, uh, Mase, it's not on a timer. Somebody flicked the lights down. Whoever opened the door flicked the lights down. I'm like, all of a sudden we hear pop, 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 something running on top of the roof. Now I'm like, oh, fuck, this shit. Everybody heard it. And it's the bean. He's running on top of the roof. He's just running around. Then I could sense him running around the land, right? So the story is going to get crazier. Mm. <laughs> I come home. Pinchy Bean, the mask is a He wanted to be part of the show or what? He wanted, well, I guess they help us understand that the greatest illusion as a species that we have is time. It's the greatest illusion. Mm. It doesn't exist. We think it does, but it doesn't. It's a fucking lie that, that you get conditioned to believe that time exists, right? So I come home after this crazy experience. At first of all, I already was scared as hell and other other things happened. So I come home and I'll start wrapping it up here. I get in the car. My wife picks me up from the airport. Doesn't say, oh, hi, honey, and kiss me. And I'm like, what's going on here? You know? And she's like, what were you doing last night? I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean what was I doing last night? What were you doing last night? Melissa? I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, something came into the room last night. I'm like. Oh, oh shit. fuck. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, yeah, this giant bean from another planet came into the room, stood over the bed. And I opened my eyes and I told him, get out. You don't belong here. And I said, what did he do? What did it do? They also told me they're not male or female. They're both. The species is both. We're going to evolve. And, and we already are both when we're born. We, you he know pointed I mean? at me. Yeah, not me. You know what I mean. <laughs> what was that all about? <laughs> We're already both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We, all of us are. So anyway, um, 
So my wife, I'm like, what the fuck? So we pick up my daughter. Like, we had to pick up my daughter. She gets in the car, and Alicia's like, what did you do? What did you do? And I kind of said, well, she's like, I told you not to do that, you know, because you're opening things up that you don't even know how to handle. Like, oh, this happened. She was, she was upset. She had a right to be upset. We pick up my daughter, bro. Story gets fucking crazier. She's like, <laughs> Ba, I have to tell you what happened to me oh, last no. night. I'm like, what happened, Mia? She goes, well, I thought I was dreaming, but this there was a UFO outside of my room, right? Um, and this bean came in the room, this giant bean, and he was telling me to get in the UFO because we were looking for somebody in the mountains told me to go inside and she says i woke up holding on to the bed like this with both of my hands and my wife's like it's your dad you know <laughs> and i was like oh fuck right and two days later my wife is mopping the floor wooden floors in my house and i hear the mop drop boom i thought she fell down so i run out of the room are you okay are you okay she goes look at the floor Fucking footsteps on my on my uh, on my floor of this giant bean. He walked right through the wooden floor. With the water, the, the, you saw the water. I saw the footprints. Oh shit! When you mop it, you could see somebody walk through there. Oye, know? qué anda pasando, güey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oye, qué chinga anda pasando, bro? <laughs> so I don't know what my point. No, my point is this. <laughs> my point is this is like. We were talking about earlier about all the stories we've told ourselves, all of this stuff. And there's so much more to us as a species. Like we don't even touch the surface. And 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 if you're talking, I think as humans, not even as men, but we're so socialized to believe all this nonsense. That's not really what's happening to us as human, as spiritual beings that are light. Right, and light that's having a human experience. There's so much more to us. It's crazy, dude. It's crazy. I believe it. I can't even make. I'm not. I'm not that good of a writer to make that story up, bro. That's what's crazy. But last night when I was watching the Oppenheimer, Albert Einstein is one of my favorite people ever in the history of humans. Albert Einstein has this great quote, and he says, "You cannot simultaneously prepare." for peace and war. And at the end of that movie, you realize that we've already destroyed ourselves. That we already have. So if we already have, what can you do this little time you're on this planet to enjoy your journey, to take care of yourself? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that movie made me think so much because that bean told me already. And like I said, I don't give a shit if nobody believes me. I'm not here for people to believe me. I care less. I'm just telling you what I experienced. So that those things have kind of changed the way that I do stuff. And, man, I'm just trying to enjoy the journey, man, and not take it seriously anymore. I don't have to be everywhere at one time because... We're a lot more than what the shell that we're just walking around, you know? Has anything else happened since then? Um, I've had a, another encounter with the, with the, some beans. Um, they were not from the same species. They were diferentes. But I realize, and we won't get into that because we don't have time. It's been happening. Whoa, 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 who's it's go, been happening to us. I was a little boy. Just, we got all the time. Yeah. The yeah. World, don't you just. Yeah. It's been happening since I was a little boy, and I didn't realize it, right? I didn't realize it when high school I had a crazy experience, and you know, you don't fucking tell people. I fucked up, and I told somebody my experience, and mm -hmm. now I, I get ridiculed for it, mm -hmm. you know? So I'll tell you, I'll tell you later yeah. so, I don't, so I don't get made fun of. Fuck it, I'll tell you now, Masi. Yeah, 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 because I want to make fun of you. Because <laughs> I was just... <laughs> <laughs> mine, is, mine is called The Bean and The Bean. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> no, in serio, I was asleep. Somebody knocks on our door. And say, hey, I'm in the room with your son. I'm the one in the room with your son. We'll be done shortly, and we'll be out of your hair. Boom. I look at my watch, my phone. It's 2.29 in the morning. I usually get up. 
uh, like around 2.45 or 3 to go to work in the morning. And my son comes running in at the same time. Right after I woke up, oh, I'm looking at the door just waiting for something to happen. And my door just gets pushed open. He comes in the room and he's like, Dad, Dad, Mom, someone's in the room. Someone's in the room talking to me, blah, 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 blah. Mm. And I'm like, oh, shit. You know, like, so I don't know how all of that transpired, but my son was telling me, yeah, it's, he's, he's trying to talk to me. He's trying to tell me his name. And uh, it was weird. And I went to work. After that, I just kind of like said, all right, no pasa nada. I got up. I went, looked around, got ready for work. Didn't say shit to anybody. You know, I didn't tell my wife this. And then when I got home from work, she was like, hey, uh, I don't want to say anything when, when Jackson came in, but... I was washing the dishes and looked in the meat and looked in the the window facing out and the, there was just like a shadow or like a dark matter that yeah cruised around the room and he said and our oldest son was like i told my wife like i didn't want to say anything either but my son sonny he was mopping the floor or sweeping the floor and he saw a shadow just go go across the room and then i hit them with my shit and was like, i don't want to tell you guys anything but since <laughs> everyone's out here you know just sharing stories it uh, gets I crazier had a, i had it gets crazier <laughs> so I said, "Why well, had the dream that somebody was in our in Jackson's room on the on the foot of his bed talking to him, and he came to our front door and he told me all about it, and then two seconds later, Jackson comes in and tells me that somebody's in his room talking to him. So I don't know how to piece that together. My wife did uh, uh, some research on, or she reached out to people and said, "You should do this in the house. You should do this. You should do that." And she did, and nothing has happened since. Mm. But that kind of stuff to me, I like. I'm like the the guy who went in the middle. I don't really believe in that. I don't want to feed into it. I think it's because of a, of a fear that I have yeah. like, of not knowing. I have a real issue with having the control. Like, I got nobody can do this better than me. I can do it. So, for that reason, I tend not to believe in things like that. But in looking back and telling my wife, and she's like, We've had those fucking experiences forever. Like, mm-hmm. you've seen these things happen around you and they've been happening around you forever to the point where Barry always tells me, like, Well, you've had somebody like following you forever. Like, mm-hmm. you've had those experiences. So it's true. So now it's freaked out. My kid was super chill. Everyone's super chill except me. How old is your son? He is when nine years old. But when the pasó eso? This happened like a month ago. Oh shit! Yeah, this is fresh. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And see, that's the thing is like we. Uh, so if you think about a soup, right? If you think of humans that were in a soup, right? And it's like the soup. There's a soup that has chicken and cilantro and carrots and potatoes. And mm. the Tell me more. Right. Right. Yeah. The, and we as humans are only tasting a small part of the, uh, the soup, which is just the potato. And we're missing out on the whole, the rest of the soup. Right. But we're so complex. But for some reason, we've been told that we're not and that those experiences are not real. Why? And, well, I think a lot of it has to do with um, other people's inability to understand it. And then, unfortunately, religion, you know, the fear of re- that religion has put into folks. I mean, um, I mean I'm mean, i not saying anything bad about folks that are religious. I'm just saying like, how, mu- how much fear comes out of that, right? You guys probably were raised like, Es el diablo. Hey. Es el diablo. Hey. Everything's the fucking devil, yeah. bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, Dios te va a castigar. Hey. God's going to punish you. Mm-hmm. Dude, I'm seven years old. Why is God so cruel? <laughs> right? Like, how could this incredibly most loving being on the planet is going to fucking hate in a seven-year-old because he hit his little sister? What are you hitting your scissor for? What is going on? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> she beat him in tennis. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, that's fear, bro. Yeah. yeah. Dios te va a castigar. That's some crazy fucking shit. And at seven yeah. years, that's everything. Think like, about that. You know how profound that is, yeah. bro. The almighty fucking The almighty. some shit to you, fool. He's going to fuck your shit up when you're seven oh, years old. man. So they're already ingraining you with fear. True. Fear. True. Fear. Yeah. Fear. Yeah. Fear. yeah. yeah. At all, I mean, Fuck! I do the same thing to the kids, bro. I gotta stop. I gotta stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't say. I don't say the osita. I'm like, hey, keep it up. They'll listen. You know what happens at night, right? Yeah. And then I walk away. Hey, cucuy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pasar otra vez, mijo. Okay. It was a Mexican with the blue hair that sat on his bed. He was very descriptive about that. Wow. Yeah, it was like it was. It was a Mexican man, and he had long blue hair, and he was telling me his name. He was, I was like, what the fuck? What was his name? Laser no, Latin. He said he, did, he didn't remember. <laughs> He didn't remember. I think there's more there. That little guy, he's he's just like me. 
I mean, pobrecito está feo también como yo. But he's very tapped into shit. He's very, um, he's very loyal. He's very like emotional, emotionally driven. He's very compassionate. He's very caring. You know, he's like, the oldest one. Es el mediano. mediano. He's the middle, the middle kid. And he's just like he's a lot of things that the other boys aren't. And I'm like, hmm. Well, tr in, in our traditional way of seeing the world, like as indigenous people, like zero to 13, like those ages, zero to 13, you're still open before you hit your, you know, your uh, puberty and all that stuff. And doors start closing. Yeah, and yeah the certain doors start closing. So you're still open. That's why a lot of little kids, they'll see spirits when they're small. Your children probably saw them or they had, they, you know, the, the Gavas was like, oh, they have play friends. They make it up to do this. It's like, no, nah, nah, man, <laughs> they're, 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 they're not play friends. They're there, you know, and mm -hmm. because Western world tries to rationalize what's happening spiritually that when it doesn't make sense to them, they make some weird shit up instead of validating it. Right. It's like they're still they just came out of the spirit world. It has, a, again, time is a weird little, but they haven't transitioned out of the spirit world yet in those years. They're still like in and out. And then what happens when you start getting older? Like you're in and out of the spirit world. You're already kind of transitioning there. Mas pa allá que pa acá. Mas, uh -huh. and, they'll, and you know when the elders are getting ready to cross over. You've all heard it too. That, oh, ya vi tu abuelita. Oh, ya vi this. And once my mom said that, I said, she's, she's ready, ready to go. Oh, man, that's go. fucking deep, dog. I'll tell you this one last story. My mom is connected to this, bro. This is fucking crazy. I know Selena knows this one for sure. But she, Selena, she got it all, I know. <laughs> she downloaded that She's audio book. She's writing the intro to the book. Um, So my mom was already in hospice, and I was at work still. All my brothers and sisters were in hospice waiting. Actually, it wasn't that far from here. But anyway, they were waiting. My sister calls me, and she says, hey, Masa, the nurse said it's time. I said, all right. So I start driving over there, right? And uh, I walk in the door, and my mom goes like this. She goes, <gasps> and the nurse looks up at me. She's like, who are you? I said, I'm the oldest son. She goes, she just took her last breath. So I was like, okay. So I, I go, and I go to the other side of the bed, and my mom transitioned. And I see her body come out of her body. And she's standing there. And she looks young and beautiful and just like super happy. And she's like, oh, the last words before I even got there, they, my sister told me that my mom looked up and she went, Amma, oh. and put her hand out. You know, because her mom, she gave for her, you know? Damn, bro. Se me el cuello, yeah. Yeah, and it's beautiful because that means the circle of life is in order, right? Mm. It's beautiful. It's not a sad thing. It's actually a really beautiful thing because the circle of life is in order. That means the ancestors coming to someone take, was there to, to welcome you, welcome you to take you home. So I said, "Oh wow!" So I see her body come out, and she's like, "Mijo, diles que estoy bien feliz que no lloren por mí." And I'm like, "Mom, how are they gonna believe me?" She's like, tell them that on the day that you celebrate my life, it's going to be somebody's birthday to celebrate that person's birthday. And I'm like, that's the message you want me to tell them? Like, what the fuck? I'm, that's really confusing. It was like a riddle, right? <laughs> and I'm like, how is this going to make sense? So I walk, I see her. She's gone. And she just like whoop, disappears, right? And I sing her a little traditional song when somebody passes. And uh, my brother and sister's like, what happened? I'm like, well, um, I saw mom, and she said that she's happy to try not to cry for her, please. She understands. She said, but my brother and sister are like, you saw her? I'm like, yeah. And she said that, you know, the day we're going to celebrate her life, and it's going to be someone's birthday. And my sister's like, well, it's probably going to be within the next two weeks. And my sister's like, nobody's birthday's coming up, Masse. Nobody's birthday. I said, maybe an uncle. And she goes, I know everybody's birthday. Nobody's birthday's coming up. I was like, I'm feeling stupid, right? Mm. Like, the fuck? I said some stupid ass shit. And then he start. maybe my brain made it up. So I don't see <laughs> <laughs> it. The name of the episode, Craqueado <laughs> con Masse. Ya está craqueado, nene. So, that was for all my Puerto Rican friends who are probably going to cancel me after this show. Um, so, 
I'm like, what the fuck? I just, I told him, I saw my mom, right? That's what she said. So then the celebration's happening, right? It was right there at the Mac Charter School. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right here with the Mac Charter mm -hmm. School. Um, we're having it right there. And, and one of my aunts, she goes, oh, masa, ya nos vamos. And I was like, you know, why are you leaving right now? You just barely got here, right? She goes, no, today's Michelle's birthday. And she wants to celebrate it by herself. So Michelle was a little girl that my mom pretty much raised for a big part of her life. Wow. And I was like, it's her birthday? She goes, yeah, she just she just wants to go home and have a cake by herself. And I was like, oh, fuck, this is what my mom was talking about. So I go to my brothers and sisters, I tell them, look, that's da, 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 her birthday. Chunky was still around. Yeah. And Chunky was there, so I go up there, Chunky, man, we got a singer, and, you know, Chunky's... <clears throat> God damn, Maza. It's a crazy story, motherfucker. Shit. <laughs> you know, and <clears throat> all right, let's sing her happy birthday. So we start singing and we finish. And I tell the whole audience, I said, look, my family. I was like, hey, my mom, so and so. And she said that it's going to be somebody's birthday. It's her birthday. I said, she's okay. Dude, the moment I see that, I see my mom walking wow. oof, at the very back. I know, fool. I'm fucking tingling, dog. What's going on? Yeah. I got goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. You don't even speak Spanish, man. Yeah. <laughs> she walked it. Well, it's just because Albert, Albert's over touching me. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole nother thing. That's a, <laughs> yeah. That's a, but she walked in, bro, and she just she just went like this. Yeah. Gracias, mijo. And left. Amazing. What a gift, man. And I can't make those stories up. I'm not that. I wish I was that good of a writer, but I suck. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But I've had so many of these experiences, bro. It just makes you question, like, who really are we as a yeah. species, man? Real shit, you made me feel, like, at peace right now. Yeah. Like, nothing can shake me from that level of peace that I have when you put things into perspective. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, that's all we are, bro. We're just a ball of energy. Yeah, all the... we're uh, the, the human part of us is horrible. Like, we're fucking killing innocent people. Around. Our tax dollars are going to slaughter innocent people right now. We're horrible. We're a terrible species, but we're also a beautiful species, and we're also a very highly evolved species. You know, so we're all, we're everything at one time, and it's 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 kind of crazy. And and I'm glad I kind of told that because I've been I've had this one man show I wrote, and I'm like, ah, oh, should I perform it? Not perform it? And I keep going back and forth, back and forth, and I don't know what's gonna happen. Maybe all these stories just die with me. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Fuck, I'm still young. I'm only, yeah. I know it looks like I'm in my 30s, but I'm 56. Already. Guys, Damn. please. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the jacket. That's it's the It's the feel of jacket. Yeah. Retro the, art. The beyond uh, retro pop. Retro pop. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Okay, okay, whatever. Retro pop. <laughs> this, this was an, an awesome and little sit down and opportunity yeah. to listen to you. Hell yeah. It's, it's very rare to get Cheekly to shut up, but you did it. By just yeah. talking and telling your stories. This is the yeah. quietest <laughs> guy on the planet. Yeah, I know. Bro. Man. That too. I was, I was, I was, I was reflect. I was deflecting rather. Yeah. When I don't say shit, that's because I'm in. I'm listening. Yeah. And a lot of the things you said really struck a chord. A lot of the things, a lot of the experiences, and just just listening to your story, man. Mm -hmm. You know, from graduating or being graduated, yeah. you know, without the skill set needed to to thrive in in the community, in in your path, in your life, to going. Forcing yourself to learn how to do certain things that you didn't have the capacity to do previously. Getting on the honor roll UCSD, you know, doing all of these things, ultimately wrapping it up with the story and the experiences and the, the gifts and the talents that you possess, man. Yeah. Sotro pedo. Sotro nivel. Yeah. So thank you very much, man, for Hell cruising yeah. in. Dude, this is an open door for you now that you know you're coming back into the world again. Open and, door. And, and, Feel free to just come on in whenever. Thank you. And, and share Hell more yeah. experiences or just wh whatever you like, man. And Let's when you guys meet the men, I'd like to stop by one day. The third Wednesday of every month. I'll send you the, the flyer. I, I can make the next one. Is it not yeah. tarde? Yep. Six, uh, six to 7.30. Yeah. I'd love to come by Hell and yeah. just see see some of the men. Shh, and that would be an imagine. honor. We okay. got to tell them not to bring flour tortillas, but it's yeah, a yeah, yeah. No, don't, don't not say that. The cylinder, the flour, cylinder flour, flour circle, circle flat things. flour circles. <laughs> well, corn is it, dude. That's like our creation yeah. stories. The first thing that Quetzalcoatl gave us to eat, we were like these little clay figures. The first thing he put in our mouth was a little piece of corn in our mouths. 
not flower. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And even today, dude, and you guys all know this, you if you drop a corn tortilla in the house, that's like the ultimate sin. <laughs> There's nothing worse than that. Like, think about the last time you dropped a tortilla. Shit, I don't drop much food, man. Yeah, well, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I don't drop much. I'm glad you went there, not me. <laughs> no, but you don't. You can't drop a tortilla. No. It's it's like, you know what? Because I've presented so many people, and I always I say, you know, the Mexicans, how many of you have ever dropped a tortilla in your house? And, like, you get one person. What happened? Oh, my grandma got all mad, right? <laughs> <laughs> See? Haciendo <laughs> pendejo. You know? Te abuelita got fucking kids. Soccer player. Yeah. yeah. But it's because it's 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 ingrained in our genetic memory of who we are as indigenous people. It's that corn, bro. That's like, I'm slowly believing everything like that, man. Everything is connected. Everything comes through eventually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what feeds the world, bro? Corn. Every today you, 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 you won't go a day without eating corn, corn syrup, corn. They fucking run cars now on corn. Yeah. I mean, corn is it dude. And you know what? The Mayas took, 400 years to create corn. Corn isn't even real, bro. It's not real. It's not a real it's not a real thing. You're probably looking at me like, "Fuck, my I just ate some. What do you mean it's not real? It's not real. It was produced by the Mayas. It was genetically like fused with this little plant called centli, this little grass called centli, Tio centli, and they crossbred it for like and then they fucking started growing corn. So corn isn't even real. Wow. It's not a real thing. So our ancestors were like so innovative, bro, that for what, maybe like maybe about 8,000, 10,000 years ago, they created this product called corn that today feeds the fucking world. It was like 400 years, right? Our country hasn't even been around for 400 years, the United States. But the Mayas sat around, scientists, and figured out how to create this one. Because think about it. What is corn? A vegetable or a, or a, or a fruit? Mm. Fuck. Yeah, man. I didn't know there was going to be a test. Yeah. Fruit? No. 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 I don't know. Fruit's Masa corn. hates me, dog. Fruit. First, yeah. I brought a flower. <laughs> now, I don't know the answer. If it's yeah. a fruit or a vegetable, I'm fucked. What is it, chicle? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's not a fruit. It's not a vegetable. It's a grain. A grain? Because it comes from wheat, from the from the tail seat. It looks like a wheat. Oh. It's a grain. See, and it's like, dude, these guys like were freaking geniuses to create this little thing called corn. Hmm. And that's the first thing Quetzalcoatl gave us, according to our stories, right? So he already, he already had told us we were going to eat it at one time, right? Hmm. That's why it's so sacred. That's why, like, you drop it, it's like, fuck. Game over. Okay, we have a, I'll end with this. We have a sign. Remember, guys, remember Seinfeld? <laughs> Boy, do we. We have a Seinfeld skit that we used to perform, and it, it was George dropped a tortilla. He was going to ask this lady to marry him, and he, he dropped the tortilla on the floor, right? So, you know how they're always sitting around, and Seinfeld, they're a Chicano Seinfeld. Um, he's like, hey, George, George, it was me. He's like, what do you mean it was you? I, I dropped a tortilla on the floor. He goes, that was you? And he's like, I was going to ask her to marry me, Jerry, and I dropped a tortilla on the floor. And, you know, Jerry's like, can you imagine if every Mexican man dropped a tortilla on the floor? What would happen to our culture? Right? And, and <laughs> you know, and homeboy's like, it was just a tortilla. And he's like, it's not just a tortilla, right? It becomes this big pedo. And then Kramer comes in, and Kramer's like, <laughs> I, 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 I heard you dropped a tortilla on the floor. And he's like, it was just a tortilla. And he's like, oh, and he's like, drops the tortilla, almost drops one of the tortillas on the table, and he catches it in midair, right? And, um, Elaine comes in, he's when there's mother, right? And it's, you know, because Seinfeld was always like absurd like that. Yeah. So it's like the, it, for this, it's funny and it's absurd, but there's also like this weird, like deep, profound truth of how sacred that corn tortilla is to us. You know, that's it. That is the essence of our culture, period. There's no way around it. Anyway, I don't know what the hell I'm saying anymore. <laughs> you guys need to get rid of me.
Oh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. And I'm talking crackeado. about. I'm talking shit about your fucking. Mencia and all these guys being cracked out. Look at me. You did it, man. We got three more hours. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> You're not down. <laughs> Chicle, wrap this up, Papa. This was awesome. I'm I'm curious if you ever go through a portal again. I would love to be there. Because I had an experience with a being when I was in college. Oh, well, tell us real quick. No, I'll save that for another oh, time. I'm all tough. Um, but I've, I've shared that story, and similar to Steve, like most people don't believe me. So I've kind of found a way to tell the story as more like a a joke. Um, you know it would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really appreciate hearing your, your story and, and just who you are, how, how you started, where you started. Um, and I'm excited to see what you decide to do yes. with, with the future. So if, if Emo Brown... The podcast, the, the group, the foundation, um, if we could be of, of service to you, um, please count us in. I'm in for the portal, too, if there's room for one more Mexican. Yeah. I'm do, down. Do you guys remember Star, War, Star Wars fans here? Yeah. Remember what Master Yoda said? <clears throat> you will be afraid. Remember that quote. Hit the button, Barry. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the button on that one. 